Hi, it's Rachel from Rachel's Real Food Kitchen, and today I thought I would show you how I assemble my fruit press for making cider. Now, before I get started, I wanted to mention that I actually am using what's called a Squeeze Master press. So these instructions are based on what my press, how it's assembled and the different pieces go together. But I'm assuming that the process is probably very similar for a lot of other fruit presses or cider presses that you might find. So I think it might be a lot easier once you see this, all these little pieces put together into a press to see how that works. And then you can apply it to other presses as well. So let's get started. base. It's made of like a ceramic or metal of some kind. And the base is really, really sturdy. That's what I like about this one because it doesn't really fall over. It collects the juice really well. One thing to keep in mind before you get started is to try to put something underneath this spout because even before you start pressing, once you start getting fruit material into the barrel and onto the base, it will start spewing juice all over your counter if you're working in the kitchen or whatever. So you want to make sure that you have something to collect that juice that might run off. And it starts with what I call the barrel, which mine actually has two different edges. So there's a flat edge on this side. There's a beveled edge on this side. The flat side goes down upon the base, centered on the base like that. And so this is where we put the fruit. But first, we want to put in one of these mesh bags. These are just made of nylon. They came with my fruit press. And so it's basically almost like a nylon pillowcase made out of like a nylon mesh opening on one end. And then actually, if you were to go to the other end, there's a smaller opening there on this end. And that allows us to actually line this barrel with the mesh to catch like the big pieces anyway. Take that down. And then stretch it over just to hold it in place. You're gonna to wanna to tuck the corners in, make sure it's even, line it up again. Now it's time to fill it with the fruit material. You have to crush the fruit in some way before you put it in here. Now you could put, I mean, you could put whole fruit in there, smash it down, see what happens. I wouldn't recommend it. It's highly recommended that you crush it first. And while they sell like, there are fruit crushers on the market, there's actually one I noticed when I was doing research for this that they actually, there's one from this brand that sells like a fruit crusher. Once you crank it and it crushes the fruit. But I never use that, never really had a need to. I just use a food processor. So what I normally do for my apples is like I will cut them. Like I might take off the stem because that's kind of hard on the food processor. But otherwise, I'll just wash them real well, cut them in half, quarters or whatever, depending on the size. Throw that all peels, cores, and all into the food processor and then just pulse it up until it's crushed enough to put in here in the barrel. And that's how I crush my fruit. I will actually tuck it into the nooks and crannies with my hand, I'll press it down pretty tight. I don't want there to be any air bubbles. I don't want there to be anything that's not even. Another important thing to note about putting fruit in the barrel is actually how much fruit you put in here. Because if you don't put it high enough, you're gonna have problems getting enough leverage to push, push and squeeze down the juice enough later. So you wanna fill this thing up with as much <laughs> fruit material as you can. I usually try to go at least to the bottom of the screw right here, um, but you could probably go a little farther. I just don't like getting stuff on the screw because it's harder to manage later. These are the next pieces. These are the wooden pieces that go on top of your fruit to press it down. So they go like this. I'm just doing this so you can see. And then on the fruit, which would normally be on the top, so even it up there, it, it doesn't move around quite so much when it's full because of the weight. The next thing that you will find are these wooden blocks right here. And these just give you enough height so that you can use the crank later to crank it down without hitting the side. So three on this side, three on this side. So here's those, here's those round pieces that I put these there and there. So here's three blocks. I'm going to put them on that side and three blocks on the other side. And we're on the final stretch. Here's the piece before you put on the crank. So again, you want to line this up where the blocks are like this. 
So the blocks are like this. Take this down. And then throw the washer on top. And normally when you would have this full with fruit, it'll be like, you know, up here by this point. Finally, the last piece is the crank itself. So get the right side in there and then just twist it down. And then this bar goes in here to give you leverage for the actual cranking itself. So what you will do is when you start, it'll be something like this. So you get it down as close as you can. So there's a pretty good pressure. And then you start winding and it'll be very, it, there's, it won't be very much resistance to start with, but you'll find the juice starts flowing out very quickly. At least it has in my experience. So this will fill up, the reservoir will fill up. It will start running to the spout, run out the spout and into whatever you have to catch the fruit juice. You keep turning it. You don't want to do it so fast that it doesn't, like it has time to overflow, but you don't want to do it so slow that nothing's happening either. So you just keep cranking and cranking until you start hitting resistance. That's when you kind of got to feel it for yourself because it depends on how full your barrel is with fruit. It depends on what kind of fruit you're pressing, um, how much juice is in it, all that stuff. You want to crank it down so low that you do have a fair amount of resistance so all the juice is squeezed out of the fruit. But at the same time, you don't want to do it so hard that, you know, you can't get it undone later or break something. So just use your best judgment on that. Kind of feel it out. Um, normally what I'll do is I'll crank it down like I did a little bit gently until I start getting resistance. Then I'll let it sit a little bit. Crank it again. Let it sit for at least a couple more seconds. Crank it again until it gets really hard. Then use some elbow grease to get it down one or two rounds more. And then see how much juice is coming out. Usually the last section, what I'll do, like when I start hitting that type of resistance, what I will actually do is usually crank it down really hard and then let it set another five or ten minutes or so just to let the rest of the fruit drain out. This is why you want to fill the fruit high enough, because if you don't, you will not be able to get the resistance without, see, you start hitting the wood and you can't actually keep cranking down. So that's why you want to fill that barrel pretty high with fruit. That's how you assemble a Squeeze Master fruit press. Have a great day!